Potter's Journal. That gets me thinking. What's going on in the studio today? And that gets me thinking. Okay, um, a time of year when butchering might have been done. Time to celebrate a bountiful harvest. But before we do that, let's see what's going on in the studio today. Okay, time to stock up for winter. Hey, I'm doing a 101 chug series. I've done a lot of jug videos. And the paint bank is just like making a jug. Um, in, and so I'm not going to throw the jug here, but we will do the final part and collar it in. Um, at this point, it's just like making a barrel mug, except a bit larger. Um, and then the collar in point, um, if, as you do that, it, uh, if you do it too fast, it can start to buckle. You can also prevent that a little bit or stop it if somehow you can manage to get another finger on the inside to help uh, stabilize and compress and compact that top lip as it goes in. And then as you are making the wall thicker, taking it in, and I'm going way too fast with the wheel. Um, you want to go very slow. Um, I was, uh, it gets thicker as you push it in. You need to throw and uh, thin it out as you go. Okay, and this is where you do want the wheel speed to be very slow. And despite uh, the fact that I'm doing a hundred jugs, um, they're all different, um, yeah, it, uh, the collared in form is difficult to make. And if I'm away from this for a while, it seems that I forget what I did. I probably should go back and watch one of the videos. Um, and yeah, for this pig, the jug that makes the pig bank, um, I will put a link to uh, one or two of my, um, throwing the jug videos below. Okay, and this is also one of the places where you often uh, will have to cut off some of the top to clean it up and even it off. But if you are able to do that thing and get, um, you know, a finger on the inside, uh, that sometimes eliminates that part of the process. And we may not have to cut anything off the top. Okay, and the banks, the pigs, I have been, you know, not completely uh, making it uh, straight-sided, but, um, yeah, straightening it out a little bit, giving it a, a curve that uh, curves into a face and into the snout. undercut at the bottom. Sometimes if there's too much clay down there, I can also cut some off with this. That also sometimes will give us a bit of a wobble in it. Which um, is not bad. You then need to go with that as you finish out the pot. And I think I'm going to make his snout, yeah, a little bit smaller. Okay, and we did that without trimming the top, so you'll have to catch another video where I give some, uh, where, uh, techniques on in close-up of not just cutting it off, but then rounding it out, which um, helps in the process. And I do not give mine an exaggerated snout. But it's something many potters do, so they must like them that way. Got 
one thick wire. Thumb. Some pens, okay. Clean off the hands. There's so many unforeseen steps in uh, most pottery videos, and I'm going to have to say, sorry, you missed one here too. The larger ones were thrown on a bat, and I did not cut them off when they were finished. I then came in and trimmed the bottom with a very sharp um, wooden, brand new wooden rib, um, and trimmed um, the bottom while it was still on the bat, and then cut them loose. The other, and this part we will see, is that when making these into pig banks, you know, it has to be wet and, and uh, not too s stiff so that um, you can add the parts. You know, the ears, the eyes, tail, the, the feet. Um, but if it's too wet, um, you know, you'll push in the jug and you can't get your hand in there to push it back out. Um, so they're being dried very slowly. Um, because it's a closed in form, you know, it can dry very fast on the top and on the outside and not on the inside and the bottom. So while they were uh, still on the wheel, I also went round them with a watery sponge um, to get the uh, outside a little bit resaturated, making sure the inside firms up. And I am going to hit them again with a mist bottle on the outside and um, cover them up and um, dry them out real slow until we're ready to put the parts together. Okay, so these should be absolutely perfect tomorrow or whenever we get to this very soon. I'm going to do three, the next three of these at once. That means I need 18 little balls of clay for legs and ears and I'm assembly lining this. I rolled out a coil and then cut it in chunks so that I hopefully get them all a fairly equal size. It seems to be working. Um, also, part of the reason why um, yes, okay, I did do sculpture for 25 or 30 years while I wasn't making pots, so it seems to make sense for me to make pots that need to be assembled, that need to be sculpted, since I also have trouble getting a great deal um, of money for my pieces where I'm located in the kind of market <laughs> with my marketing non-genius. Um, it... Um, makes sense too to put uh, more into a piece and uh, hopefully uh, a piece that we can get more out of it. And that's also why big, medium, small, just one of the big ones so that uh, we have something to say, oh wow, um, look how much that is or uh, maybe we will get the big one. Okay, and we have got this set to cone six. While that's in the oven, we've got more of these to work on now. Um, I found out for the bigger one, well, first of all, I need a walnut, okay, almost with the outer skin um, on it. And, um... Get, getting near the end here. This took way more time than I thought. I found out that pinching it in my fist starts to shape a real nice foot. And then by flattening it down, it develops absolutely nice, perfect shape for putting right on the side there. So we will slip this. Okay, and attach them. Yeah, this took way more time than I expected, so we're back here the next day. And as I said, yeah, I guess I would need to do a hundred to get this down quicker and faster, maybe. Um, already with ten, I did um, 
advance the technique of doing this a little better and it's a lot number 10 here is um, going on a lot easier and smoother than number one this is now pre-shaped and, and goes on a lot faster Okay, so only one more to go back there. Get these um, dried out, glazed, and roasted in the oven. So I like my Albany when it's roasted to a golden haze. I like the Albany when it comes out a glossy clear. I like my dark green celadon, but what happens when you have a lot of picky guests coming and all they want is blue? Well, it's a good thing I found a blue I like. <laughs> the, um,. Sea mist, the greeny blue from uh, Standard Ceramics. Wow, look at this guy. He's a big one. Okay, we can stock up a lot in there for winter. And I'll just have to learn to only do one or two with the glazes I like. <laughs> and do the celadon to keep everybody else happy oh how about this guy I did a pair of these okay and what else do we need as the year draws in and we stock up for winter well I'm still working on a big order for holiday gifts the garlic oil plates but that yeah stocking up for winter thing what do we need we need pies and we need them in the blue the blue sea mist okay stop back and see what we can cook up okay next week